Hello Brewtubers and happy Homebrew Wednesday. Um, not going to be drinking homebrew in this video. Instead, something quite interesting. Um, it is a bottle of Rochefort number no. 8, uh, which has been abandoned in my garden for um, two years, possibly, something like that. Um, so yes, I found this in a crate which I had um, in <laughs> in the garden just by the clubhouse. Um, no idea if it's going to be any good or not, but it's been in the, in the fridge for a few days. Um, so yes, uh, brought it probably 2019 I reckon. Um, didn't get around to drinking it, forgot about it, and well here it is now. Um, slightly rusty <laughs> lid, no label left. Uh, anyway, we'll see what it's like. So uh, got my appropriate branded glass, washful. Um, so do the 6, 8 and 10, which are the most common ones. And this is the number 8, which is sort of the in-between one. Slight hiss, which is good. Um, so it's still well carbonated. Oh, that's the shit in the bottom. Yes, yeah, so there's going to be quite a lot of deleterious material in the bottom now. Yeah. I did see whilst pouring that a load of black gunk floating. Um, this is probably dead and decayed yeast. So, because it's been outside, it's been exposed to God knows what temperatures and sunlight. It's uh, not been looked after, bless it. But, um, well, it still smells beery. Yep, it um, mm, it does have a good nose. Mm. Sort of that creamy, sort of blueberry sort of aroma to it. It smells how I remember, um, so that's a good start. Perhaps not quite as pronounced, possibly, but anyway, let's dive in, shall we? Oh, let's put the uh, put the logo to camera, of course. There we go. Oh, that's still good. Ooh -hoo -hoo. That is a cracking beer. So that, that flavour, the aroma, um, sort of does come into the beer a bit. Um, you get that sort of creamy maltiness, and then a lot of like, um, like so blueberries, strawberries, um, some very fruity notes. Mm, that has survived very well. I'm not sure if I'm detecting a slight something in the background which is not quite right. Hard to um, describe it really. But yes, that sort of creamy sweetness is still there. Um, the number eight, I think, is my favourite of the three they do. Um, I found the six, number six, a little bit. Um, it was nice, but it was a little bit simple compared to its bigger brothers. And I found number ten a bit too much, but I thought eight was a good compromise between the two. I um, perhaps should I I should buy some bottles again and go through it. That might be quite a fun little beer tasting video, going through a load of Trappist beers. I mean, it'll be a short video because it'll be absolutely blotto um, very quickly. But 
Yeah, probably quite an interesting little video to do. Like, perhaps do all three of the Rochefort beers and perhaps do a couple of the <laughs> Chimay beers and then Orville and um, Western Mal, Rachel, whatever else you want to use. Um, it's that Western Valerian, is it? Or, or however, you, however you pronounce it, it's uh, very hard to get hold of. But um, yes, anyway, back to the, the matter in hand. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, mm, very enjoyable. Um, say all the, the flavours I remember there. Might be a slight hint of something not quite right in the background, but it's so subtle. Um, and towards the, um, you know, the back of the beer that um, you could, I can, I can, I'm enjoying it very, very well. And it's not really off-putting, so. Yes. Can you keep a beer outside <laughs> in rain, wind, sun, weather for two years and still drink it? Um, the answer is yes. Should you? Probably not. Um, I did have some other bottles in there which certainly did not survive um, very well. Um, but yes, this one's not done too badly, which is good. So yes, that's the end of the video. Um, Oh, I might as well give a little update whilst I'm here on situational things. Um, so I have a firkin of a Watford Harlequin Amber Ale, 4% uh, using Harlequin hops. Um, a firkin of that is going to the Aston Clinton Beer Festival at the end of the month, which is good. Uh, first beer festival, I think I've sent a beer to since uh, the Watford Beer Festival of 2019, uh, which was in November 2019, and that's held. So, uh, of obvious reasons, of course, there haven't been any beer festivals. So, yeah, nice to send one off to there. Um, I did send a keg to Creative Juices in Millend, um, but I'm waiting to... I don't think they've put it on yet. Uh, at least I haven't seen it on Untapped, and I haven't had any feedback yet. So, um, I think they still have it ready to go on. So, interesting to see how that's gone, because it's the first time I've used a commercial keg, um, S-typed tanky whatever they are so yeah interesting to see how that goes um i do have a second keg for them when they finish that one if it all goes well which is promising um brewing at the moment i brewed before this heat wave started so oh shit that reminds me got to dry hop that um <laughs> that's uh, last friday or thursday i can't quite remember um but i brewed a mystic amber ale i seem to be doing a lot of amber ales um it's something I quite like doing, just chuck a little bit of amber on it and gives it a lovely colour and um, adds a bit of extra malty presence to it, which I quite enjoy. So, yeah, I do seem to favour amber ales. But, yes, yeah, so I did a Mystic Amber Ale uh, with a Mystic Hop. So, uh, when I first brewed that before, it had lovely grapefruit notes, but I couldn't sell the beer because um, I think I used cask findings in bottles, um, which was a big mistake, but this was when I was inexperienced or more so, um, and yes, I ended up with, you open the beer and then released um, from bottle conditioning, just erupted, so yeah, that didn't work out very well. So yes, Mystic Pale Ale, which I'll go and dry hop now, and uh, yeah, I'm waiting for the heat wave to um, go, um, because it is far too hot, I think a lot of people are finding this, it's far too hot in in the uh, brew shed to um, enter. I've had uh, two bottles blow on me, um, one this week and one a couple of weeks ago actually. Um, so yes, it's a bit hot in there. The problem with my shed is it's in direct sunlight for most of the day. So it's quite nice, you know, when it's sort of, you know, sort of 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees, that sort of thing. It's quite nice in there when it's sort of, the cooler side of hot <laughs> um, but when it gets to this ridiculousness then it's um yeah it's too much to go in there so um yeah i'll wait until the uh, the heat wave breaks and then i'll um go in again um a local pub said they want a dark beer so i'm thinking about doing um old london porter for them 
Only problem is they wanted a sample first, and I don't really have any samples of that until I brew it, so um, I might have to. I'll brew a 40 litre batch, and I'll put one in a pin. Um, the pin's 19 litres, or 20 litres, whatever it is. And then the rest I'll um, do something else with. Keg, probably, and then I can um, sell it, uh, bottle a few off keg for them to try. So yes, that's about it really. Um, it hasn't been many videos really because as I said it's not been ideal circumstances and when I've wanted to brew I've sort of got on and brewed rather than um, you know wanting to record it. Obviously I didn't record did the last beer so I might do it next one so anyway. I'm going to leave it there because so I've been rambling for about 10 minutes. Um, well, not quite, but anyway. I shall uh, see you all again very soon, I'm sure. Thank you. Bye-bye.